Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this screencast in which we are going to use the Black and Scholes model for finding out the value of a call option. And once we have done that, we are also going to invoke the put call parity condition to find out the value of a put option. At the outset, we must remember that the Black and Scholes model can be used to find out the value of European options only, that is the ones that can be exercised only at expiry. Now, since we are not mathematicians, we are not going to go into the derivation of this uh, call valuation formula. That has already been done for us by Messrs. Black and Scholes and for that they have earned a Nobel Prize as well. What we are interested in doing is to use their uh, formula to find out the value of a call. And ladies and gentlemen, this is that formula. On the left hand side of this equation, you see the letter C which stands for the current value of the call option. On the right hand side, you see two terms inside square brackets. The first one is this and the second one is this. We are taking a difference between these two terms. Let us talk about the first term first. Inside the first square bracket, you have a product between two numbers. The first number is the S which is the current stock price and the second number is the N of D1 about which we are going to talk shortly. In the second square bracket my friends again we have a product of two numbers. The first number is simply if you look at this one here you will realize that this is simply the present value of the exercise price. This capital letter E stands for the exercise price and you will realize that we have discounted this exercise price by using continuous discounting and then we have multiplied it by n of d2. Now what is this n of d? n of d my friends stands for the value of cumulative normal density function which we can find out from the cumulative normal distribution table. Now what is this n of d1 and n of d2? n of d1 and d2 my friends are probabilities that a random variable we are talking about random variables here for example stock price is a random variable what we are interested in finding out is the probabilities that a random variable like a stock price variable uh, having normal standardized distribution will have values less than d1 and then d2 but in order for us to find out the probabilities that their values will be less than d1 and d2 we need to first of all establish what is the value of d1 and d2 and for that we have these two formulas here this one for finding out the value of d1 and this one for finding out the value of d2 let us take some numbers and use them in these formulas to find out the value of a call option and then later to find out the value of a put option we have this data with us. The current stock price is $60 and we have a call option on this stock for which the exercise price is $56. The continuously compounded risk-free rate of interest is 14% and we also have an estimate of the standard deviation of this stock price which is 0.3 and this option is uh, expiring in six months time from now that is half a year. Um, one thing to be remembered time in this uh, formula look time appears here where we have e raised to the power of r times t time to expiry is always to be stated in years so since the data given to us is in terms of months six months to expiry we are going to convert that into years and that will mean to us simply half a year the first step uh, my friends is going to be to find out the value of d1 for which we are going to use this formula here. So let us start doing that. Let us open a bracket and then inside let us write the natural log of first of all in the numerator we are supposed to write the stock price which is $60 and then we are going to divide it by the exercise price which is $56. Uh, let us put these two guys inside the small bracket and then let us put a plus sign to continue further. After that, let me start a square bracket and inside that, let me write down the uh, risk-free rate of interest given to us 14%. So we write 0.14. After that, what I'm supposed to do, I'm supposed to write down the variance, this one here. I have an estimate of standard deviation. So what I need to do is to just square this up. 
0.3 squared is going to give me 0 0.09 and then what I am supposed to do is I am supposed to divide this by 2. After that I am going to close this square bracket and then I have to multiply the second term with t which is our time or half a year in this case. So, I write 0 0.5 and then I am going to divide this entire term. Let me first close the bracket and then divide this entire term by the product between the standard deviation and the square root of time. So, let me write down the standard deviation 0 0.3 and then uh, let me write down the square root of time uh, half a year. So, if I take a square root of 0.5 this is what I get on my calculator 0 0.7071. So, now since this is set up we just need to solve it. We are going to find out the ln of 60 over 56 first. So, let us do that 60 over 56. So, 60 divided by 56 is equal to this and let me press the ln key to find out the value it is 0 0.0689. So, let me write that here 0 0.0689 after that a plus sign and then what I need to do is to find out the answer to this term and let us start doing that. Let us first of all deal with the numerator part this one here 0 0.14 plus 0 0.09 divided by 2 times 0 0.5. Let us do that here on the calculator. What I am doing is 0 0.09 and then I am dividing it by 2 and then is equal to then plus I am doing 0 0.14 is equal to this and then I am multiplying this by 0 0.5 when uh, which gives me 0 0.0925 and that is what I am going to write here inside this square bracket 0 0.0925 then I close the bracket and then I have to divide this by the product between 0.3 and 0.071. The product between 0.3 and 0 .0, uh, 0.7071 gives me 0 0.2121 and after that when I perform this calculation my final answer will, is going to be 0 0.76. So, this is the value of D1. And then I can go ahead and find out the value of d2 as well which is going to be easy. Let us look at the formula. The subtraction between d1 and the product between standard deviation and the square root of time. So, d1 we have already found out 0.76. So, I am going to simply write here 0 0.76 and the product between standard deviation and the square root of time this item here that also we have found out the value of which was this 0.2121. So, I am going to simply write here 0 0.2121 and that gives me 0 0.55. Now, what I am going to do in step 3 is that I am going to go to the cumulative normal distribution tables which are available in any standard financial textbook or a statistics textbook as well and I am going to find out the n values for D1 and D2 as well. So, let us find out the n of d1. What is d1? 0 0.76. So, I am finding the n of 0 0.76 and when I go to my tables the value that I find corresponding to 0 0.76 is 0 0.77 and then I am going to find out the n of d2. d2 we have calculated 0 0.55. So, we are going to write it here 0 0.55 and from the tables the value that I am going to get is 0 0.71 and that uh, makes us ready to find out now the value of the call option. We have all the inputs ready with us to be used into this formula.